I don't know, I could be happy with this, or I could learn and try to fix it. Total run out. It's only off by about a, less than a thousand right there at the spindle. So we're losing it somewhere along the way. I think we can fix it. So what I'm trying to do here is replicate the axle shaft or the shaft from the motor and then mounting the, the pulley. So first things first is the, there's very little run out here in the, uh, in that, what I'll call the engine, the engine shaft. Next, we're going to mount this guy up as it would be on the, on the motor and then try to take the run out out of the, the big pulley. So here's my simulated motor shaft. We've got uh, just less than a thou of run out. So let's build from here and get this, let's get this thing straight. So I'm simulating the motor drive shaft. I've got the shaft is, is true. And I've bolted this on just as I would if it was on the um, on the motor. So let's just do a quick check of those two things. So the drive shaft on the motor. Zero that guy out. About one thou of run out. That's good. And then. The pulley, over on the machine, we're seeing 20 thou of run out. Let's see what we got here. So less, but I'm still seeing some. So I'm at about 11. So it could be because there's some play um, in, in how these set screws get set. But still, it's it's a lot of run out, and let's just t take a visual of how that looks. Uh, let's see, make sure everything is ready. We are on a high speed, so let's slow that down. So slow speed, let's just see how it looks. Yep, yeah, still got a fair bit of wobble on that. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is try to measure how much change there is in the crown. Okay, so the peak of the crown is right there. All right, now if I go to the outboard side. So it drops down. Pretty consistently to about there. So it's a bit flat on the outside. But right there it's 13 thou difference. So if I check the other side, it drops down a lot more. So 
13 to 14, go all the way to the edge, 13, comes to this peak, and comes back down to 15, 16, 17, 18, well, it really falls right off. So that's 26. So it's 26 on the back side. And it is 13 on the front side. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off, I'm gonna take out the middle. The middle section I want to, I wanna true up the middle. Let's start there. I started to prep uh, an angle to do the pitches, but I'm gonna start, change my mind, I'm gonna start here in the middle and see uh, what I can do to fix that up. Now I know there's a bit of stick out with a big heavy weight on the end, so I'm gonna be going slow as far as the, um, you know, how much depth of cut we're going to take. All right, looks like so we have the middle. Looks like we've got the middle established. And you can see the run out there because of the blue. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna start from the inside and work our way out. There's no sense bringing the whole thing down and then try to shave off the sides. I'm gonna try to leave the middle and now I'm gonna try to work the sides down at about five degree angle. I'm gonna use the uh, compound slide for that. Five degrees was a lot. That's a lot. You could tell by the way it was cutting it. Yep. Well, can't take it off now. I can't put it back. But um, let's see about the front, how we're going to do that. So to do that, to mirror it, I'm going to put another five degrees on the front because symmetry is going to be important. However, uh, and at that point, then we could bring the top down if we need to, either with emery uh, or with some. Uh, some more machining. All right, let's see. Let's get this compound. Contracted. And now we're going to go to five the other way. Tighten it up. Now I did use a, a protractor to get that angle, but you know, not the most accurate tool in the uh, arsenal. All right, so let's see. I don't want to come at this slowly. All right, so let's start right there and see what it does. Okay, it's rough because of that single point, but we can definitely emery that out. Actually looks pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to, I think we'll ch we're gonna hit this with some emery I gotta knock off, there's a, a lot of overhang here I gotta break off. 
We'll knock that off. We'll knock off that edge. We'll hit it with some emery and then we're gonna, then we'll test it with the indicator. It's not working on this side. It's It's got a big overhang. Definitely needs a chamfer. And let's see. Nope. You know, I'm going to come back to it. I know I said that I, that I would. Now let's actually do that. Also pretty big grooves on there. Let's see what the emery can do. smooth still got some some grooving in there but let's take a measurement So we're still getting some, some of that surface finish. You can see it chattering all over. Let's try a little smoother spot. still seven from the low side of and it just kind of pops but that could be again some surface finish so still got a little bit more work to do on the middle let's check one of the edges max of about seven. There's just some weird stuff. Am I bottoming out? There's just some weird stuff happening with that needle. Oh, that's why. Got it. Okay. Haha. <laughs> because our, our set screws are coming a little loose. All right. First time for everything. Let's tighten these guys up. Now let's take a look. All right, so that looks to be about four, five. Yep, so around five thou run out. And the middle, about the same, five. Okay. So very interesting. Makes a lot of sense. Tells me that these set screws are important. All right, well, I'm running out of memory. Um, so what I've done, we tightened up the set screws. I just did a quick pass here in the middle and I'm getting about two thou of uh, variance here. So two, maybe three. 
So definitely better, still a little bit of chatter, so I need to finish up the surface. But I'm gonna hit each side again with the five degree uh, trim, and then we'll uh, come back and see what the results of that look like. So after running the surface grinder for a little bit, I was having trouble with the belt staying on consistently. And so the first place here I'm going to look at is the, the crowning that I did on this pulley. And I know when I did it, when I looked at it before I turned it down, it, it looked as though there was a flat part in the middle and then crowns on either side. After having done some research and kind of reading more about crown pulleys, you really should have just one point in the middle where both sides taper down from. And I can tell by the video that it was running here on this back side. There's a little bit of a crown right here and there's one right here. And it was kind of living on this back side and couldn't quite make its way towards the middle. And because of that, it was slipping off the back. So what I've got here is I've um, mocked up a drive shaft like the one that's in my motor. Uh, we're gonna mount this here and I'll redo the crown with one peak right in the middle and about a one to two degree slope on either side.
Okay, to recap, we have fixed the crown on this pulley, and then I ran it dry, just kind of with my hands, and it seemed like it was slipping off of this guy here in the back. And you remember these were kind of bowed, and so I rotated it 180 degrees, and it seems, again, we're just doing it by hand, it seemed to stay on a little bit better. So I'm going to turn on the three-phase generator, turn this guy on, and let's see how it goes. And of course, the safety block, which was pivotal in the first, first round when it caught that weight. I can almost guarantee you that that's how it broke the first time. Okay, let's give this a whirl. We've got the three-phase generator running. We will go for green. Okay, there you have it. That's the end of part four, if I, it hasn't bled into part five. There's been a lot of activity happening since part three, like three weeks ago. Um, I don't know, it's running on its own. The belts aren't sliding off. It feels like a win. Um, but if anyone's familiar with these flat belt machines, send me the comments. Appreciate it. Any feedback you have would be welcome. Um, but. You know, until then, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you would, subscribe to my channel and you'll see part six or part five, whatever's next. Um, I would appreciate that. And uh, I look forward to bringing this thing back to some usable state. I don't know if it'll be cutting tenths, but uh, if we get to thousandths, I'll be happy. So, hey, until next time, thank you and have a great day.